I actually remember the moment that I got diagnosed with cancer too, and it was testicular cancer. And the first thing that I had to do was swim. It felt like home, because it is home. You know, for me, I had a couple surgeries. I swam between all of them, and it wasn't because I needed to swim for any physiological reason. It was because I needed to swim for my mental health, and that is something that I take with me forever, and one of the reasons why I will continue to swim forever. Nathan Adrian is an eight-time Olympic swimming medalist, and he is one of the greatest freestyle swimmers in American history. He made his Olympic debut in 2008, swimming alongside Michael Phelps, who made headlines winning eight gold medals in Beijing. After his initial Olympic success, Nathan made TV appearances, including an episode of Mythbusters, and went on to swim at the University of California, Berkeley, where he was a multi-time NCAA champion. Nathan continued to dominate the 50 and 100 freestyles in international races, representing Team USA at the 2012 London Games and 2016 Rio Olympics, where he was selected co-captain. Across three Olympic Games, Nathan won eight Olympic medals, five of them gold, and he had positioned himself as one of the greatest freestyle sprinters in history. Nathan Adrian. Nathan Adrian. Nathan Adrian. But in 2018, at the age of 30, training full force towards the Tokyo Olympics, Nathan heard the three words that no one wants to hear. You have cancer. He's battling testicular cancer. Diagnosed with testicular cancer. There's always a different code word for whatever indicates that you have cancer. For mine, it was the words vascularized mass. And I remember hearing those words as I was walking into the Cal locker room, literally past the sign that said, choose your attitude. I and mean, I thought that the juxtaposition of that was, was very interesting. And the first thing that I had to do was swim. Today, Nathan is cancer-free, a husband, father, business owner, and he continues to share his inspirational journey with the swimming community and the world. We all can still get better, whether it's having a better streamline, whether it's pulling more water, whether it's working on our dolphin kicks, even though as youth swimmers, we were not instructed how to use our thoracic spines in the crazy, freaky way that all those awesome underwater kickers use it, you can still get better. Nathan's positive mindset, passion for progress, and determination enabled him to persevere when the odds seemed stacked against him. From the start of his Olympic career, he embodied the enthusiasm and characteristics of a champion. I was this 19-year-old kid who was just like going there to soak it all in. It's awesome. It was so cool. I was living this life of a professional swimmer. I was like, yes, I get to wake up. I get to eat. I get to swim. I get to come back. I get to eat, take a nap, eat, swim again, lift weights, eat and go to bed and do it again. This is awesome. You know, it, was my, it was my life. It was my dream. It was my passion. And at that point, I had no idea whether or not swimming was actually going to work out. So I got to, I got to really enjoy that. From that point, Nathan committed to a life of training. 5 a.m. workouts, weight room, swimming, dry land, more swimming, competition. It seemed like a never-ending journey, but over the next decade, Nathan proved to himself and the world that he was not just a serious competitor, but he was also a champion that led with gratitude and set an outstanding example for younger swimmers. I'm having a pretty good year in the 50 and the 100 freestyle, but I'm not feeling it in the 200 freestyle. I had an Olympic gold medal, I had several NCAA championship titles, but I was doing my pace, I wasn't hitting my times, and I was more tired than I should be. And I was like, oh no, what do I do? A guy named Robbie Sullivan came up to me and was like, Nathan, listen, I, like, I can tell you're a little bit scared here, but I just want to let you know like, I, I believe in you. And that was the exact thing that I needed to hear at that moment. You never know what your words might mean to somebody. I was supposed to be the team leader, team captain, but to hear that from the guy who was slacking off in 200 Fly Group meant the absolute world to me. In any journey, there are ups and downs, but nothing can truly prepare you for taking on cancer. In 2018, everything changed. They went in through four little holes, about this big, uh, blew me up full of a bunch of CO2 and then cut out about 35 lymph nodes uh, where the cancer may or may not have spread. It actually did, but they, they got it all, so. It was tough, you know? They go through your abdomen, so total, after that cancer journey, it was five times they went through my abdominal wall. And uh, I mean, just completely shut off like this side of my body for a very long time. I would try to flex my, my core, <laughs> like as hard as I can, like how, I, how everybody knows how. Uh, nothing, soft as ever, just because it was completely turned off. So it took a really long time 
And I'm still dealing with a little bit of it now, uh, but it's, it's almost all the way back better. Nathan found a way, like all champions do, to persevere. Think about the hardest workout that you've ever done. And part of you is like shivering a little bit like, ah. but the other part of you is like, man, I'm really glad I did that. The pain that you experience in workout is temporary. It's gonna be for an hour or it's gonna be for two hours, whatever your workout is, but it's over. Easier said than done, but Nathan found a way and it was swimming that helped him through the experience. And like any great champion, they're surrounded by an amazing support team. You swim at the pool with your teammates, you stretch at the pool with your teammates, you eat lunch in the room like this with your teammates, you do everything with your teammates, and that is actually what makes us so close. To transition from being fierce competitors to being teammates is a really hard thing to do because you're competing against these people, right? I'm like in 100 freestyle, like I was just in the same heat as that guy. And now we have to figure out a way to be friends, but we actually, Team USA has, a, has done a really good job of it. It is, it is a wonderful, wonderful culture to be a part of. Some of the most treasured moments of my entire swimming career. One of them was obviously, you know, winning, winning some golds, a couple of them. The other was that final hug I got to give to my buddy, again, Matt Grievers, after the 50 freestyle at the Olympic trials. I did not make the 2021 uh, Olympic team, yet I'm still here standing. I did not vaporize into a puff of dust, as many of us fear when you are standing on the blocks, afraid and get, we're getting ready to go. But to give him that final hug uh, for both of us on the national team and, and know that our journey as, as those professional athletes has, has probably come to a close was just a finality that I, I really appreciated. Nathan's story is inspiring and I appreciate how open he is to sharing his experiences with the swimming community and the world. He's a leader and a mentor for swimmers, and I'm thankful he was able to share his swimming knowledge with all of us at a local swim clinic. I know that there's busy adult lives, so and if you're making the time to spend your Saturday morning here to swim, that means it means something to you. And that means that you're with a bunch of people where swimming means something to them. So let's go ahead and get ready, get in the pool, and then spend this time together doing something that we enjoy. Nathan is a true mechanic when it comes to refining stroke technique. From competing internationally to now running a swim school in Northern California, he's seen the sport from every perspective. He is a champion in the pool, and more importantly, he is a champion in life. You know, for me, I had a couple surgeries. I swam between all of them, and it wasn't because I needed to swim for any physiological reason. It was because I needed to swim for my mental health, and that is something that I take with me forever, and one of the reasons why I will continue to swim forever.